as I've stated plenty of times over and over again, I believe that Boosie's stance on Lil Nas X is, you know, is not a solid one. Only because he threatened to go up there and beat him up. I was like, eh, I get it. Because the way he broke it. See, look, the, when you want to have discussion like this, they're better placed for places like podcasts or long form shows where you can really draw out your thoughts. Because when Boosie explained why he said he would drag Lil Nas X off the stage, he said in his statement, but I didn't. I don't know why in my on my part I didn't take it as that way. If if I see this person na- dancing naked in front of my kids, I don't necessarily also. Like, well, actually, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really backtracking my point. I wouldn't go up there and beat him up. I would just shield my kids and walk away. I wouldn't feel the need for violence on that person on stage. So they brought that up, and Charlemagne kind of. I don't say he stole my point. I don't think anybody heard my point. And they stole it. But he went with the point that I was going with, which is why are we so adamantly going against Lil Nas X when street rappers for years and years have promoted other very harmful things that we really do see in real time society. We look at crime rates. I know poverty is the reason for crime and this and that. But even Boosie said in his interview, he realized how influential he was when he got out of jail and most of his fans were either in prison or dead. So he knows the power of his tongue on his fans. He knows the power of his musical influence and what he raps about on his fans. He says it in the interview. So this is Charlamagne the God kind of reiterating uh, my point about street rappers and Lil Nas X. No, I'm just saying it's hypocritical for street rappers to point at another rapper and say they being negative well, for how they put their lifestyle times because that happened to us so much. Because all this wouldn't be going on when Pac and Biggie didn't was there. Come on, let's keep it. No, they used to get, they used to get, but I don't I'm the only one speaking up. If Pac was here, he would have said something. I doubt it. Yes, he would have. Well, we don't Pac would have said something. And you know the great thing about somebody like Boosie is like you can you can disagree with his points, right? Like I disagree with a lot of his points. A lot of things he say, I disagree with. But when you got motherfuckers who just so damn funny, it's like hard to really and I, I would never say I'm mad at anybody. When I talk about people on this channel, it's not a I'm angry with them, I hate them. I ain't like them people on Twitter. I don't hate this brother. He's probably, and I always kind of like try to reel this back in. These people are probably great people, personal to personal. But if we're just speaking about ideas, some of the ideas are a little bit dumb. Some of the ideas are a little bit hypocritical. You could say Lil Nas X is bad for children and they're bad for this and they're bad for that, which I could agree with because I say all the time, I don't think he should be doing the vulgar shit because his audience is catered towards kids. But there's a way to say it that won't come off the wrong way. I can say, and people even, my statement towards Lil Nas X, people will make it seem like I'm being homophobic because I'm saying that. No, he's targeted towards kids. I don't care what he says. I don't care what you say. His fan base is targeted towards children, even if he doesn't believe so. Adults ain't out here jamming Lil Nas X like crazy. It's the children. That's the way I would uh, put Lil Nas X in a box or just have a criticism about him. Because I've had plenty of conversations, even on the podcast, Absolutely Unsure, with my friends. We had a whole segment on what is more detrimental to the black community, street culture or the gay agenda. I lean on the side of I feel like the street street culture and the street influence is more detrimental than the gay agenda. But some people say the gay agenda. I don't have a conversation with having a conversation with you and talking back and forth. Right. But the thing about the Breakfast Club interview, a little boosted, I didn't like was that they discussed the, the issues, right? They discussed how he felt about Lil Nas X. He continually brought up how he has a gay assistant, he has a gay cousin, I don't hate gay people, I just don't like the agenda. And people who believe what Boosie believes, right? This I'm going to get to why I didn't really like the interview, but I'm going to say this part first. And I know, I say this all the time, but I know race and sexuality are two different things in a lot of people's eyes. But the way that you speak about a certain individual, whatever characteristics you choose to pick to speak about them, whether it be their religion, just insert that, his rhetoric that he says, with whatever you are and see if you feel comfortable with that rhetoric, right? Replace gay with black and see how you like that rhetoric being spoken. Just a lot, just that's how I look at it. Replace it with that and see how you like how that sounds. And say, instead of saying, I don't like the way that uh, gay people are pushed in media on TV. Replace it with, I don't like how black people are being pushed and perceived in media. Not to say I don't like that they're putting uh, like 
the stereotypical like lowest form of whatever you consider black is not not like that. I'm just saying black people on TV in general. That's the way white people used to be. Why why are we promoting like just that's how I say. It. Look at it in that context and then try to reframe what you what you think or reframe what you say. And also, we all know it'd be contradictory because we I only got to bring up the the kid and the adult and the your 11 or 12 year old allegedly being you know sucked off by an, an, an adult prostitute like that's like another level especially when you're when you're rallying around the cry of protect the kids that's just you can't really stand you don't have that leg to stand on when you're doing X Y Z but I also realize everybody's gonna do their own thing that's what I didn't like about this interview. <laughs> Instead of just letting Boosie get his point across, whether it be right or wrong and having an actual discussion, it felt like they was trying to change and mold him into a different perspective. A guy like Boosie, you're not going to change his mind on how he feels. You might give him a little bit of tidbit information. He might be like, okay, maybe next time I speak on this, maybe I'll say it like this because I know that people will misconstrue it like this, so I'll, I'll kind of clean up and polish my message. But the way that they just kept circling back to it it's like bro the first 20 minutes y'all already hit all the gay points you hit the little Nas X thing you did this you did that then okay hey bring bring Flame Marone let her talk about the gay it's like is this interview gonna be the whole thing about the gay do we have anything coming up do we got an album dropping he barely mentioned Boosie Badge he barely mentioned his TV documentary coming out like Boosie is an entertaining person. We could talk about his faults in the beginning. We can kind of have a conversation about that and how it's detrimental. But eventually, can we get on to some other, probably possibly more entertaining conversation? But they kept wheeling it around back to that. I don't know why, but that's the way that they wanted to conduct the interview. And I also, and also I, I know why. The Breakfast Club gets in a lot of shit, right? So when it comes to certain issues like this, LGBTQ, Black Lives Matter, any like these mainstream uh social issues they have to make sure that they don't allow their platform to be used to spread hate look the last not the last time but maybe like the second or third to last time Lil Duval was on their pot on on their show and Lil Duval says I don't know if he says something about transgender people he says something about somebody some community got offended and then they went crazy they're trying to cancel the breakfast club it was it's like a shit show so now every time they bring somebody on there they have to really press it in their head that these are the views of this person. Look, we're good. We're trying to coach this person in that way. That's how it looked. That's how the interview as a whole looks. It looks like, hey, Boosie, we're going to bring you on here. But we're not going to allow you to continually push your narrative on the gay agenda. We're going to stand down on you to let the people outside know we really ain't with that shit. Rather just, hey, why you feel that way? And that's not really a, you know, you, you should probably should have did this, probably should have did that. And he was like, you know, but I still feel, I, I respect that as a parent. If, you know, if you don't want your kids to be gay, like I can't force you to want your kids to be gay. But some of the rhetoric you use can be misconstrued. Maybe instead of saying this, you should say this. And then you just move the conversation along that way. So some of the tweets that came out of him, they were kind of like parallel people. There are people that agree with Boosie. There are people that disagree with Boosie. These are two of the first tweets that I've seen um, when I hit the quote tweets of the interview. So one person said, the way the rap industry upholds homophobia is so anti-black. Boosie is garbage, as is platforming him, which pretty much are saying that rap protects people who are against gay people, right? They allow the rhetoric to fly crazy when it comes to gay people. So in some way, that's anti-black. I guess the point being is that there are black gay people, so being anti-gay is in turn being anti-black. I mean, hey, Twitter, it's too many antis, too many words. I get confused. Anyways. Then they say Boosie is garbage, which is saying he's trash. I mean, I ain't got to really explain that. And his platform. So not only is he shit on Boosie, he's now saying that Boosie should not allow, be allowed to have a platform to say what he is saying. Which is the same way y'all got Donald Trump. By trying to push down people and push down ideas away instead of combating certain ideas and just pushing people off to the dark corners of the internet, that's where you breed you know, the white supremacist type. That's where you breed the incel type. And so instead of educating, and maybe he would come to an understanding with you at some point, maybe, it could be a long shot. Maybe Boosie never comes to an understanding of the breakfast. Maybe he just always stuck in his ways. But at least you tried to have that conversation. You're not trying to shun him away from society. The other person said, the Buffs Club ain't shit. They over here trying to change Boosie's mind, and he like, nah. So, that's the thing. I don't think he should change his mind. 
just inform him on possibly better ways to spread how he feels about it. Instead of just, you know, like he said, oh, I'm going to beat his ass. Could you be spreading violence to gay people? Potentially he could. Because if he's well aware enough to know that his music had a lot of his fans going to jail or being or dying, he could be aware that his voice and his words against gay people can be viewed in another way as well. That's That's really all I got. I'm trying to be more understanding of people. Even though their ideas are wrong. You just got to kind of understand where people are raised, where they come from, what they what they, what, what what they what they were raised like. Like if Boosie was raised this way, that's just the way that he was raised. Now, like I said, I don't think that the gay agenda is more detrimental than the street agenda. Some people say that they're both de- super detrimental. I just don't see the overwhelming gay thing taking hold now maybe it'll take hold in a couple of years it'll be a whole different thing maybe who knows but the street thing is very prevalent the thing that the only way to get on in entertainment is to be street is very prevalent i watched the 6 9 documentary on hulu the other day he knew that was the way to get on if you watch him from the beginning to when he went to jail for the little child indecent thing, to when he got out, and the guy, he framed it so perfectly. Once he got out for the child, you know, the child thing, before, he was using sex, right? He was fake having girls give him head. Not too much gang shit, you know, in his thing. Not too much, like, the lyrics were still kind of tough. The lyrics were still a little bit street, but the imagery wasn't that yet. It was girls, oh, I got girls, she got a thong on, she doing this, she doing that. As soon as he got out and the judge said, you can't be putting out sexually explicit content over the internet, that's when he dove straight into the street shit. I got the bloods with me. I got the red bandana. I got this. I got that. And that's what breeds those type of people. And that is the belief that the only way you can become successful or be real or be a stand-up guy or be a real man is to be a street guy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, what am I saying? I don't look down about anybody that lived that life when they actually are bred and built into that life. If you really, really come from poverty and you really, really had to do what you had to do, I understand. I don't approve, but I understand. But people who probably didn't have to do that, people who just got in it to fit in, people just felt, you know, I need a little bit of protection, so I'm going to just go full on crash dummy. I don't get that portion of it. 